stop. We're horsing around on this week's episode of the Animal Rescuers. Yeah! The Animal Rescuers has been adopted by Pet Planet. There is nothing more important to us than your pet's health. Tracy, thank you so much for having us here today. And just for the audience, we are at All God's Creature, Creatures Foundation. And I'm particular to horses because I love their spiritual energy. Can you talk a little bit about your foundation and how you got started? Um, well, we are horse sanctuary. So in the sanctuary is for the horses. It's very a serene, we really work at it being quiet and uh, comfortable and the environment is conducive to them being calm and happy. Um, that's basically what we do. I started um, many years ago and I was about six years old. We were driving through Cave Creek of all places. It was very um, deserty then. And there were a group of horses, probably about 30, that were all clustered together. It was around winter time and they were very out of place. They weren't moving around, they didn't look comfortable. Um, in that time frame, my uncle had horses, so I figured he was the person to call. And I called him and I pestered him. Um, Wait, you're six years old? I'm six, yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Maybe five, I think I was closer to six. But you know what's amazing about that is because I think that when you're destined to do something in life, that ripe age of five or six is when it comes to you. So that is such, oh, I, I think amazing. it's, like Carolyn Mace mentions, the archetypes. You have those archetypes. At that point in your life, you, you haven't ruled out what you can and cannot do. You don't have those limitations. Yeah, thank yes. you. Yes. Beautiful. Um, so I pestered my uncle. He did, he promised, he kept his promise. He went out there, which must have been an enormous job, to round up the horses, um, bring them in, get all the, uh, the stock uh, papers and things that were needed with the Arizona Department of Agriculture and rehome the horses, feed them, take care of them, medical, everything. And the really awesome thing is I got to see them at night. It was so little, it was so dark, and it was a full moon like last night. And it was just wonderful. They gathered around us, the horses were just comfortable. You could tell their body language was happy, their energy was happy, and it just never left me. It just always stayed with me. Animals and children, I believe, are the closest thing to God's spirit. And so it was their spirit that was touching you. And that's what bothers me most about people that abuse and hurt animals. It's Why don't they see it? Why don't they feel that energy of the purity? And it, it's hard. And, it, and you can look at it that way. And, and But you can also go, they just haven't gotten that far in, in who they are. They may be, there may be an emptiness in them that they can't fill. They thought maybe originally the horse would fill that emptiness w with prestige, with um, uh, maybe the horse's spirit or freedom, their symbolism of freedom and spirit would fill that emptiness in them and it didn't because that wasn't, it just doesn't always get filled that way when you're empty on that level. Um, and you can spend a lot of time analyzing people where you can go out and do something for the animal. That's a very good point, and you chose to do something, and you're continuing to do it today. So we uh, toured your facility. It's beautiful, Thank and you. it is calm and serene. Thank and you. And so is your persona. <laughs> Thank you. So take me through a day here. What happens? Um, you know, a day, it's pretty quiet, but in the morning we get up, we start feeding. Um, they all kind of have separate diets that they need for whatever um, condition we might be balancing out. Um, groom them uh, after they eat, you know, they've been eating for a, about a half hour. We start grooming them, fly spray them, um, clean their houses, make sure they have bedding. Um, they all have fans and a couple of them have coolers because of the sun. It's just pretty torrential um, living here and then if you're not feeling well, it's even worse. And that's pretty much the morning part of the day. Then at noon they get fed and then they get a, a first meal at six and then they get their last meal at 
nine or ten depending on the weather and that's a pretty typical day I have volunteers that come in the morning to help um, everybody loves it it's quiet We're driving by I mean you would never know this is here and tell everybody where we are because we're there's a busy street right there um, we're actually in one of the busiest places in North Phoenix um, it is quiet here <laughs> But we're Thank you, still, validation. We're still in the middle of the city, and um, it has grown exponentially around us. Um, but it's still that that sense of peace really res resonates here. Sometimes people think we're in a dome. <laughs> because when I pulled up, I'm like, there's no way that this is where I'm supposed to be. But I'll sit mm -hmm. here until I get a phone call. Oh. I'm in the wrong yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, it does. And and we did that. There's a couple of reasons. One, it, it helps keep it private for the horses uh -huh. because they really do need um, space to themselves. But the other thing is, many years ago we had a horse left in our property, and it needed um, some pretty intense medical care. Um, we couldn't even get it up to take it to the horse hospital. Uh -huh. And after 12 hours, the two veterinarians that were attending, we had to euthanize it. Oh, it was so pretty. Sorry. It was a pretty compelling moment when you decide that you want to make sure that you, that particular event doesn't reoccur. So your job is basically to rescue? Uh, ba basically to rescue and provide sanctuary. Just horses? We, d we can do everything, um, but horses is really my passion. It is so obvious, your passion and your love for these animals. I can feel it, I hear it in your voice. What can we do to help? Donations are always wonderful. You can donate on our website. but. Us, along with every other rescue or organization, if someone feels that they can take one day a month and, and donate three hours of time, and if they do that for three hours, it's a hundred hours, and I assure you it would enrich your life. Do you trust the food you feed? At Pet Planet, our commitment is to helping our customers navigate through the confusing world of pet food, reading ingredient panels, asking critical questions about manufacturing and ingredient quality. Our pets rely on us to make the very best decisions we can for their health, happiness, and longevity. Pet Planet is here as your partner in pet health because there's nothing more important to us than your pet's health. You can be a part of the animal rescuers also, making a difference for the animals and bringing your business to center stage. Become a sponsor for the show. Ad rates are very low for the summer, so now is the time to jump on board. And you can be an animal rescuer too. Make the call. Welcome back to the Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. Hi, Hi Leah. Sweetie. Can we come in your home? Hi. Hi. Hello, Leah. Oh, just a pretty girl. Just a pretty girl. So why why do they wear this again? So this is to keep the flies out of their eyes. Plus, it's very dusty in Arizona, and this helps keep some of the small particles from them running around and dust and everything from also getting in their eyes. So it protects their eyes. Does it bother them? Don't no, wear? they can see right through it. It um, looks very much like when you put the screen on your windows and people can't see in, but you can see out. And Leah had a very special story of what you have to do every morning. Please. She has a fly allergy. Ugh, which is like the most horrific <laughs> thing for a horse, <laughs> right? Have. Exactly. It's and crazy. And so every morning they all get brushed and groomed, but her, we have to make sure that we also um, fly wipe her and have her totally covered so that the flies aren't on her. This is um, um, Lucy, Lucy, and I don't know if she's going to come over. She might not. She's a little shy. Come here, Lucy. Are you going to come over? You want to be on camera, Lucy? Anyways, Lucy had was very ill and had to have colic surgery. Here she comes. Hi, come sweetie. on, Lucy. Hi, Hi. baby. It's okay, Lucy. And so without the surgery, no. she would not have survived. Aww. She needed a lot of care when she got here. Um, and she was here for less than three weeks and um, just her system started shutting down. Aww. And so she had to have a colic surgery to save her life. So this is Dollar. He was actually born here. 
and his mother, we didn't know she was in full. Uh -huh. um, she had West Nile and we were treating her for West oh. Nile. And about four months before he was born, we found out she was in full after she had been on some pretty intense medication wow. for West Nile. Yes. Wow. So he's okay then? So he's fine. Well, he has some immune issues. But sure. Is that from the meds? We're not really sure. Um, it was really tragic because uh, four months after he was born, his mother passed away. Oh. So, um, and that's how Jack got to come live with us because we knew Dollar needed a friend. Right. <laughs> And they and do love each other. They do huh? love each other, oh, and they play God. like boys with each other. Um, Jack's story is pretty unique because he actually was in northern Arizona in a semi-wild herd. Come here, Jack. And if it wasn't for my husband, we would have never gotten him into the trailer. Come but here, he Jack. was uh, chased by ATV, so he has some, oh. some kind of deep emotional trust issues. Come here, Jack. You don't have to be like that anymore. Come here, baby. Come here. See? Come here. That's good. The first Pet Planet store opened in 1996 after the devastating loss of our Cocker Spaniel to cancer. What we learned then about pet health was eye-opening. The food and the treats that we were giving him did not support his immune system and may have actually harmed him. Pet Planet was established to be a community resource a store that offers only the healthiest products and the best knowledge on pet health issues. At Pet Planet, there is nothing more important to us than your pet's health. You can be a part of the animal rescuers also, making a difference for the animals and bringing your business to center stage. Become a sponsor for the show. Ad rates are very low for the summer, so now is the time to jump on board. And you can be an animal rescuer too. Make the call. Welcome back to the Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. Hi everyone, I'm Yoni with Balancing Paws, and this is Brad Pitt again. And today we're going to be talking about the treadmill, uh, how we get the dogs introduced to the treadmill, and the benefits of actually using the treadmill, especially uh, out here in Arizona where we are. So one of the main reasons why we actually use this treadmill, especially out here in Arizona, is because during the day it's really difficult to take your dogs out on a walk because the pavement is so incredibly uh, hot. And he's actually starting to step up on there on his own, which is pretty nice, um, which actually starts from getting him on that place command. So you can start off by kind of you know, getting him on and off the treadmill without putting the tre turning the treadmill on, so kind of building his confidence, which is another thing the treadmill does, because the more you teach your dog to do new things, the more their confidence builds, whether they're uh, insecure or if they're, or if they're aggressive or, you know, something that is just any type of behavior that's uh, uncontrollable, the more you teach them, the more they start to build trust and respect in you, so you can kind of get control of, of all aspects of their life. So we're going to take him on and off the treadmill a few times before we actually turn it on by just guiding him on there. And when he's on here, giving him, giving him some affection so he relates being on here to something good. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and take him off, okay? Because if we just throw him on there and just instantly turn the treadmill on, it's something totally uh, crazy to the dog. Not, he's not sure what's going to happen. Um, and surprisingly, he's standing here pretty, pretty nicely. So we're going to get it going after one more time of taking him off. And one more thing these are good for too is uh, another, you can see we still have our other pit bull over here. Um, and what that does is if we have a dog who's reactive to other dogs, we get him going on a treadmill, we get other dogs around him, it teaches him to just kind of desensitize to other dogs and we can get him to socialize eventually. So the way we started off is I'm going to go ahead and get up on there with him and we're going to start pretty slow just so it feels normal because if I'm not up there it's going to feel kind of weird. He's not going to be too sure what to do. And he's, if he tries to get off, we just very gently lift upwards to kind of keep him, keep him a little encouraged to move forward. And I slowly kind of take one foot off at a time. And in the beginning, you want to make sure you hold this leash just in case he decides to kind of back off so you can always let go. You don't want to hurt him. Um, if, if, if you have to do any more than just a gentle uh, gentle leash pressure upwards and you feel like you're starting to choke him, just let go and, and restart the whole situation because you don't want him to, to choke and start to relate it to something negative. 
So he's doing really well. So once you see that he's not trying to go, go too far back or run too far forward, you can start to kind of pick up the pace a little bit. Most dogs go between one and a half to three miles per hour. And once they start to learn it and they, and they, build, uh, they build their new skills, it's going to be something that they actually enjoy doing and they're going to be running up to it and almost begging for it. So you, want, you just want to make sure that they keep a nice, even, steady pace. So if they're going too slow, which like he's starting to kind of you know, mess around over here, you want to just let him know to kind of relax. Or if he starts to go too fast, as you can see on this treadmill, there's a little bit of uh, scratches on the front. Sometimes the dogs will try to, try to uh, grab that end. And if you just kind of show them that there's no need to and they can just kind of be comfortable right here, it's a great physical and mental exercise for them and it'll help you with a lot of behavior issues. I'm Yoni with Balancing Paws and I'll see you next time on The Animal Rescuers. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Krista Gibson from Animal Medical Services and this is At The Vet. Today we're going to talk about something that we can probably all relate to, which is getting prescriptions at the pharmacy. As times have gotten tougher, everyone is looking for ways to save money, and one of the things that a lot of pet owners are doing is going to retail and online pharmacies. Over 30 billion prescriptions are filled at pharmacies every year, and 99% of them go out just fine. But that leaves a staggering 30 million mistakes. Pharmacists are one of the most trusted professions in the United States. They outrank doctors, engineers, even clergy. In fact, they're right up there with veterinarians for being viewed as compassionate and caring. News reports show that errors in pharmacies are on the rise, particularly in veterinary dispensing. What happens is a couple of things. One, pharmacies in human medicine use different nomenclature and abbreviations than veterinarians do. So there's a huge potential for errors to happen just in translation. Another possibility is that your medication can be substituted at the pharmacy. Generics are substituted, different doses are substituted, and sometimes when a human pharmacist uses what they know in human medicine, it doesn't necessarily translate to what happens in animal medicine. In a highly publicized case in California, for instance, a Labrador had his prescription changed from 2.5 cc's, which is milliliters, to 2.5 teaspoons. That ended up in this particular dog getting about a four-fold dose of the medication, and he ended up really sick and in the hospital. So, how do you protect yourself against this? Well, first of all, be familiar with what your pet's medications are. When you take your prescription to the pharmacist, ask them if they understand about veterinary medication versus human medication. Ask them if they know what medication that you're giving and that they understand the dosage. Read your prescription when you get it from the veterinarian, and make sure that when you get your medication, everything matches. If you get something that you don't expect or that looks unfamiliar, ask the pharmacist or ask your veterinarian. If your pharmacist suggests changing a dose or a medication from a branded to a generic or making any changes to your prescription medication, be sure and check with your veterinarian first or have your pharmacist call the veterinarian and make sure that whatever changes they're making are appropriate for your pet. Both your veterinarian and your pharmacist have your pet's best interest at heart and nobody wants to have anything bad happen. So they are trustworthy, but make sure that you know what your pet's medication should be like so that you can help prevent any mistakes, errors, or even catastrophic events. Thanks again for visiting At The Vet. I'm Dr. Krista Gibson from Animal Medical Services. Do you trust the food you feed? At Pet Planet, our commitment is to helping our customers navigate through the confusing world of pet food, reading ingredient panels, asking critical questions about manufacturing and ingredient quality. Our pets rely on us to make the very best decisions we can for their health, happiness, and longevity. Pet Planet is here as your partner in pet health because there's nothing more important to us than your pet's health. You can be a part of the animal rescuers also, making a difference for the animals and bringing your business to center stage. Become a sponsor for the show. Ad rates are very low for the summer, so now is the time to jump on board. And you can be an animal rescuer too. Make the call. Hi, I'm Jen, and this is your Pet Planet Pet Tip of the Week. This week, we're going to talk about senior aging pets. One thing to ask yourself is when does your pet actually become a senior? If you have a dog that's a member of your family, and they're a small or a medium breed, 
We would typically class them as a senior pet when they hit eight to 10 years of age. If you have a large or giant breed dog as a member of your family, which by the way are classed, if at an adult, they're 60 pounds plus, they would be considered a senior as young as five years of age. This may surprise you, but the reason behind this is because they're carrying around so much excessive body weight, which can put stress on their bones and joints. So we wanna take care of that from a nutritional perspective a lot younger. If you have a cat as a member of your family, we would consider them to be in the senior age bracket when they hit 10 to 12 years of age. One of the common misconceptions as pets age is that you should actually reduce their protein in order to make it easier on the kidneys. This is a fallacy. Proteins are the muscle building blocks. They're what formulates the body and providing enough digestible protein to maintain body muscle mass is extraordinarily important for the health and well-being of your pet. When looking for a high quality senior pet diet, make sure you're looking for the addition of a joint supplement. Look for ingredients such as glucosamine and chondroitin. Keep in mind, however, the amount that they put this joint supplement into senior diets really is meant for prevention. If your pet is showing signs of arthritis, you wanna consider supplementing with an actual joint supplement. Much like for people, glucosamine and chondroitin can be a real benefit to pets as well. Glucosamine has real benefits because it acts as an anti-inflammatory and helps to soothe some of the pain and discomfort due to arthritis. Additionally, it increases the lubrication of the joint, making movement a lot easier on your pet. Chondroitin is cartilage building blocks that really helps to regenerate damaged cartilage that we can see with aging pets. When looking at a senior supplement, consider all the options. A liquid supplement can be much more beneficial to your pet as the ingredients are absorbed at a much more efficient rate. Additionally, there are powdered formulas, tablet formulas, and even functional treat formulas for those finicky pets. The important thing to consider is the concentration level. Make sure you're reading those ingredient panels and finding concentration levels of glucosamine and chondroitin that are beneficial for treatment. Another common concern for senior pet guardians is that as their pets age, they become fussier. Additionally, senior pets typically will have had some dental work done and have lost a few teeth. One important consideration to combat both of these issues is the addition of a high quality canned food diet. The addition of a canned food diet really helps those fussy eaters enjoy their food a lot more. Plus, the consistency of canned food really makes it a lot easier to chew for those dogs with dental issues. Stay tuned each week for another Pet Planet Pet Tip. More of the Animal Rescuers coming right up. Oh, uh. 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 Honey! Uh. Okay. Welcome back to the Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. This week, our circle of friends shared stories of courage that ended with noble deaths. If you saw our Facebook page this week, you read the story of Tony, a bloodhound mix that came to the shelter very pregnant and with a severe urinary tract infection. She gave birth to nine beautiful puppies. However, she did not live long after that birth. A rescue group stepped in, took care of the puppies, but it was too late for Tony. Also, one of our dear friends, Nicholas, a golden, succumbed to the cancer battle that he had been going through for almost a year. He was such a trooper, going through procedure after procedure. The cancer was relentless. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you to please step in and help. Adopt, donate, volunteer, spay and neuter, and you can make a difference. We leave you this week with a look back at the amazing Nicholas.
There is a special dog for me right now, and his name is Nicholas. He was turned into the shelter. We named him Nicholas after St. Nick. We're hoping he's going to be our Christmas miracle. A couple weeks before Christmas, we found him in the shelter. He has a very, very large growth on his face. At this point, we're not sure what that growth is. We're really hoping it's not cancer and that we'll be able to remove it. But he only weighs 44 pounds, and he should probably be about a 70-pound dog. So we're dealing with some of his body weight issues and anemia. He had ticks all over him. Today has been a fantastic day where we've had celebrated Nicholas's coming out party. Nicholas, if you remember from a couple shows back, was the dog that was rescued from the east side shelter with large growth on his face that we had removed and a skin graft done over to the side of his face. And today he had over 75 of his friends, fans and followers show up to celebrate his coming out party.